welcome to BCS Careers Inspiration. This series is designed to introduce you to a range of different people who work in technology. We'll find out a bit about their background and what their job's like. So today I'm joined by Joanna, who teaches computing in a secondary school. Hi, Joanna, and thanks for joining us. And um, obviously, lots of people watching um, have been to school themselves and have had teachers, but there's a lot that goes on in teaching behind the scenes. So if we could start off just by you telling us a bit about what your job's like and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So I am a secondary school teacher, as you've already said. I teach computing to Key Stage 3, so that's year groups, year 7, 8, 9. I also do GCSE, so that's year 10 and 11. Um, Really, though, it's a lot more when it comes to being a teacher than just teaching. Uh, so really our job is there to inspire, motivate you, and make you um, actually enjoy the learning process and, and really just have fun. Um, it is a lot of planning, so I do spend a lot of time making sure everything is uh, set and ready. So resources are a key point in that, making sure they're well designed and clear. Um, so really, we just want our lessons to be as fun and as accessible as possible. And what I mean by accessible is that anyone coming into your classroom will know what you're talking about, um, what you've written, and really how to just take part and get stuck in. Um, you do spend time marking, though sometimes that can be really insightful, uh, especially if you've got a creative student um, who says their ideas, like it can be really fun, but it's also really useful to help you understand as a teacher how you can get better. So say if there is a group and you realize because you've done your marking, which is great, that, oh no, um, there's something where they haven't quite understood it. Well, because you've done that, you can then go back next lesson, address it at the start, and everyone will be up to speed and understand, so that is great. Um, when it comes to being a teacher, it is a lot of the same in terms of a cycle. I'd say, so plan, teach, mark, repeat. But every single time you do that, you do get better. And also another part of being a teacher is the clubs. So after school, you want to run fun, interesting clubs. And my clubs that I'm gonna be running next year are the Minecraft in education for year seven. I've got girls that can code for year nine. And then I also have, hopefully, fingers crossed, a environmental impacts group where students can come and share their concerns with me and we can help direct their desire for change and their voices. So, fingers crossed. Yes. That sounds great, like three very different and very useful things to be involved with. So that's brilliant, yes. thank you. And um, it'd be interesting to hear about things that you're um, currently working on, or I guess like recently, everything's been um, turned upside down by the move to uh, working and learning from home. How have you found that? So yes, things have uh, had to change slightly um, to include the remote teaching from home. And the transition for our department, our computing department logistically, hasn't been too bad. So we were already a paperless department. So we were relying solely on um, Google Classroom to deliver our lessons. Uh, to provide resources and such. And that has been great because all the students have had that experience. It means that they were ready for other subjects that they haven't had um, Google Classroom experience with. They know where everything is. So it meant things ran more smoothly, um, which is fantastic. Uh, another thing that we've had to kind of deal with is because this isn't a normal time, um, learning wise, we've had to adapt our approaches to our lessons. So because you know, so many families and children might be having difficulties for whatever reasons, for example, not having access to a computer because mum needs to do their work. Um, and part of being a teacher is actually being really sensitive to that and making sure that things are set up fairly and realistically. We are very conscious that children were spending, you know, so many hours in front of a, a screen and that's obviously not good for your health. So we've tried to make varying levels of tasks for our department lessons. So that meant the kids or the, the students still get a sense of achievement and they still get this sense of satisfaction, which is what you want when you're learning. Um, but they can do so in a way that's more scalable. So all our tasks were, um, had different levels and then they could just access that when and wherever they could. Um, our main goal 
for as a whole school really but also you know department as well was to make sure that they did enjoy the learning process that was the key part for us and to really build their confidence um, tasks that had instant feedback was amazing for that like little pop quizzes because when you're in a classroom obviously they're really used to being like miss and being able to get an answer from you to be able to get anything pretty much from you whereas that's been more of a challenge online but having these instant things and setting things up in that way has really helped with engagement so that's very good mm, yeah that sounds really good nice and I guess yeah I, the the transition seems to have worked quite quite well for you so that's brilliant and you've mm. used some really good tools there yeah and um the next thing it would be good to find out is um how you got into teaching so i guess from the teaching side and then also from the subject side was um computing something that you always were interested in or how did you kind of get to where you are today yeah so i've always been interested in computers though it wasn't till a much later time in my life that i decided to really go down that route at university yeah at university um academically uh, though once I got there and I was doing my degree, it was by chance I kind of went into teaching. I was asked to help out at some STEM workshops, so where we would go in and help teach Python for the first time or, you know, help build robots or whatever. And I just found that so much fun. It was so enjoyable and it gave me such a real sense of like achievement. Like when, when the students were getting it, I was like, yes. Um, and it also helped me realize that I could stand up in front of a class and deliver like a class of 30. You don't realize how much practice you have. Um, so, for example, when you're going through your secondary school experience, you don't realize how many times you actually stand up in front of a classroom and deliver a presentation. And it's the same with uni. You do it so much in university as well that when you come out, it never really occurred to me that, oh, I, I could do that. It always sounded really daunting. But it gets easier every time like it is just so much easier and you've already got the skills to do it um so it is quite quite amazing really yeah and you're right the more you do it the more your confidence builds until you don't even think about it as being a thing anymore because you literally do it for five six hours every single day so it just becomes like second nature yeah and what would you say the most exciting bits of teaching what do you love most about your job uh, so I love the classroom buzz. It's this atmosphere that's almost, it's, I, I can't even describe it. It's just so much fun when students are working together and it's all buzzing and they're learning and they're trying to like achieve a common goal. I love it when we do group work and um, even when it's like a little bit of competitive edge, it's just so much fun. And it's, it's one of those situations where you can really start to see them grow and develop. And that is part of teaching. It's just one of those priceless moments. You do notice as well in those situations, it starts to click for students. And when they get that click, they go, oh, my God. And that's why this, that, the other, you know, it's, it's very, um, very progressive and very fast moving. Uh, and that's what's really fun. Student creativity also spurs me on. I love it when I have um, creative students who uh, take computing and they they progress with it, you know, and they turn it into something that I haven't thought about before, or they give me another example of how to even describe it. And I think, oh, that's brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? Like, so similar. And I think, oh, goodness, well done there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's just really fun, really rewarding and uh, relationships are everything in teaching so um, when you have a close uh, bond with a class I feel like you can really um, go that extra mile with them and that is also really nice and fun and rewarding because you can pick apart their concepts and really get to the root of some stuff so it's really fun. That's brilliant thank you and no two days are the same uh, at school, are they? But I guess it would be interesting to know what a typical day does look like for you. And then also when you're not teaching, what kind of things you like to do? Yeah, absolutely. So you're right, there are no two days. Uh, you get you could teach one class on one day and then the next, the next time you teach them the day after, it can be completely different. Um, I normally get in at school by 7.30 and that's just me prepping really, making sure I have everything ready for the day, all the resources. And 
depending on the meetings um, or if we do any twilight sessions, which is when we stay behind and train for a bit, I can leave school at around 4.30, 5pm, but I do work outside of school. So in my evenings, I do like to mark. That's just me personally. I like to mark my lessons from that day. Um, and I plan, I try to not plan as much at the weekend. I try and keep it more in the week, but I do get loads of my weekend that I can enjoy. So for me, it's all about those gaming sessions. I love sitting there, really enjoying something, zoning in. I find that so much fun, but I also like hiking and climbing, especially, you know, some bouldering. Uh, I find that really takes me away and, you know, gets me away from the internet, which can be quite a lot. Uh, so it's good to just step back and remember the world a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And then lastly, um, it would be great to hear from you uh, any advice you would give to people either who are interested in getting into teaching generally or um, specifically into computing. Yeah, absolutely go for it. That would be my first bit of advice. It is a career that brings so much value and meaning to your life. Um, it's so much fun. What I would recommend is getting or going to the Get Into Teaching website. It's there you can find everything you need to help you to become a teacher. If you can go to a Get Into Teaching event physically or virtually, I totally recommend that you do that. It's where I found out about BCS and the additional support that you provide. Um, but I also feel as well that um, it can be a really good indicator for you because I got to speak to quite a few teachers and um, some primary some secondary and it helps me realize oh, okay maybe secondary is more for me than primary but obviously it could be the other way around for you just you just don't know unless you ask about ask about things really uh also get uh try and get a chance to observe in a school it can be quite um it can be quite easy actually to get that i got it through my get into teaching event uh, to observe but it's fantastic if you observe when you're not quite a teacher yet and you're not the student being taught to you get to view the dynamic of the classroom and it's so insightful when you see things see what you can pick up you might pick up oh why did that teacher move over there what group is over there what what were they trying to do try and unpick it before you've even learned anything and you're you're halfway there already really it is um so fun no two days are the same you get great holidays <laughs> and as well um there's no harm in trying you know they're great bursaries and scholarships available to you so you know i'm really happy in my job hopefully uh, you'll find some meaning in it too and i only wish you the same really uh, enjoyment for your job essentially that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Joanna, for sharing those tips and advice and, and a bit of your kind of daily life with us. That's really been useful okay. and I think very useful to anyone who's interested in finding out more about teaching as well. So thanks very much for your yeah. time. Yeah, thank you very much. Take care.